Good Sunday morning and welcome to the historic Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church in beautiful downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. We welcome you to our virtual worship. Come and be filled with the Holy Ghost as we partake of the biblical bread of life. We believe that a breakthrough is right around the corner and we hope you enjoy this virtual Rush experience. Man, come on, it's time for worship. Would you just lift your hands right where you are and celebrate God with me? Listen, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. I hope this morning on this Sunday that you are excited, filled with Jesus' joy, knowing that the Lord is on your side. If you know the Lord's on your side, would you just put your hands together right where you are I just say thank you Lord for being on my side I know you had a whole week long you had some trials you had some problems you had some issues but you made it through because the Lord was on your side amen would you just bow your heads with me as we receive now the invocation let us pray spirit of the living God we want to say thank you we thank you for this privilege you've given us to be able to worship and we ask now God that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we continue to lift up your holy name. God you just have your way. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. We're going to ask now our music ministry is going to come and bless us. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise wherever you may find yourself. Come on, give him praise. Come on, he's worthy. He's due the honor and glory that you should give unto him. Look, I want to encourage you in this season of transition of power in the president's uh, in the White House. We want to always remember to always hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. None unmoved and earth can stand. Build your home so things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on, you know you should hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand Hold to his hands God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand Trust in him who will not leave you Whatsoever years may bring, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more close to Him you should cling. You just hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to His hand. Changing hand, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, and if to God you have been. changing hand oh, oh to his hand God's unchanging hand 
going to hold on to his hand but we're going to lift him up for the bible declares that if i be lifted up he's going to do the drawing unto me We're so glad that you could tune in to the virtual rush experience i know that you had an exciting week as we celebrated dr martin luther king day we celebrated the inauguration of president joseph biden and vice president kamala harris so i know this week was exciting but i also know that you may have experienced some trials and tribulations but listen you made it to sunday and i'm glad 
that you've tuned in to join us and worship with us and so listen I want you to do something for me would you if there's someone watching with you would you look at them real good and just say I love you and if there's nobody watching with you would you just speak to yourself and just say I love me because listen we got to remember how to love ourselves as well amen we're getting ready now to receive our announcements and then our music ministry is going to come and bless us and then we'll be ready for the word amen metropolitan and here are your announcements all meetings will be held via zoom please use the meeting id number 556-977-4267 you can also use the conference call number 1929-205-6099 on monday at 7 p.m is our steward board meeting on Tuesday at 11 a.m. is our Tuesday morning Bible study call that will take place via conference call. On Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our virtual Bible study. To participate, please go to zoom.com and input in the meeting ID number 556-977-4267. You can also join through the conference call by dialing 1-929- 205-6099 and use the same meeting ID. On Thursday at noon is our prayer call and the Deaconess Board will lead us in prayer. Due to the coronavirus, office hours have been reduced. A mobile office number has been created for the church. The number is 919-822-2174. Please know that we are doing everything we can to stay connected to meet the needs of the congregation. This concludes your morning announcements. Have a great Sunday. I just wanted to come and share with you to encourage you that you've made it to another year. You are in 2021. That's 202-W-O-N. So remember, you've already won in 2021. I also wanted to come to you to share how you can give here at Rush. We are using the app called Givelify, and so we encourage you to download the app, type in our church's name, Rush Metropolitan, and give. It's just that simple. We also want to encourage all of our members. We are right now in the midst of our tribe rally. So see your tribe leader as we continue to move and reach our goals. Listen, I want to also say to you, continue to be safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing. And listen, now it's time for worship. So let's get back to worship. In a world of uncertainty, we must be certain about one thing, and that is, where does your soul reside? And you shouldn't have to think long or think hard about it. I think it was Douglas Miller that said that my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the nights from days Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease and if the winds keep 
Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from days. Still, that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms they don't cease and if the winds keep blowing in my life my Sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But the word of God, my soul, I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite The storms, they don't cease. And if those winds keep blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Let me say it again. I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But the word of God, I've got, I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast unmovable despite the tides but if the storms they don't cease and if the winds keep blowing in my life my My soul has been naked. 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 The billows may roll. The breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the night. There's clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is nigh. My soul, my soul, my soul, my, my, my soul, my soul, my soul, my Ha! 
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you for my soul being naked. God, we thank you for our souls being naked. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Come on. If you know your soul's been anchored in the Lord, that's a good place to shout. That's a good place to celebrate God because you know your soul has been anchored in the Lord. And you had some storms, you had some trials and tribulation, but you know that your soul is anchored in the Lord. That's really a good place to be able to praise God because you know that it's going to be all right. No matter what you experience, it's going to be all right. Amen. We're getting ready for the word. And so if you would join with me in the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter, and we're going to begin our reading at verse 15. Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 15. It says this, he said, and what about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, Happy are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has shown this to you. Rather, my Father who is in heaven has shown you. I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock. The gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Anything you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven. Anything you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. For just a few moments, I want to preach from this thought. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Would you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, we ask now that you would decrease the flesh of your servant and increase the spirit. Let the words of your servant's mouth and meditation of your servant's heart be acceptable in thy sight. Let your people be edified and empowered to know that they too can do the impossible through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ. Allow us through this word to leave this holy place better than what we came. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. Let go and let God. This week we celebrated three individuals. On Monday we celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King. On Wednesday we celebrated President Joseph Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. And if you were to examine their life, you will find that in order for them to arrive at the places they landed, it was not an easy journey. And this really stayed with me because we have to realize you can have a promise, but the truth of the matter is getting to the fulfillment of the promise can be challenging. Now, I just want to be real this morning and say the promise creates problems. I mean, if you look again, uh, this past week as we celebrated the life and legacy of Dr. King, Dr. King accepted the divine call to fight for justice and equality. He believed in the promise of a better day, but he, what he believed in created problems. Dr. King was stabbed. His home was bombed. He was arrested, talked about, and even mistreated, and ended up being assassinated for believing in a promise. That promise created created problems. And this is where some of us are right now. You have problems and issues because of the promise. 
promise that God spoke to you. And this morning, I just wanted to tell you to just let go and let God. Because here it is. Just the other week, we talked about Joseph. And when you examine the story of Joseph, you find that Joseph had a promise that his family did not want to believe. Matter of fact, his brothers got so tired of him that they plotted to kill him and ended up selling him into slavery. These were problems that came as a result of a promise. But watch now, Joseph never got upset. Joseph was in jail for a crime he didn't commit because of a promise. He helped out a fellow cellmate, uh, and the same cellmate forgot about him, but Joseph does not get upset. He simply let go and let go. And you see, at the end of the story, we bear witness to Joseph being second in command of Egypt. He had issues and problems, but he learned to just let go and let God. And see, I understand the promise has created problems for you. And if we really examine your problem, problem, some of us would testify the majority of your problems are not coming from the enemy. Uh, they're coming from people. Uh, but let me encourage you this morning. You've got to let go of what people are doing to you and against you and let God handle it. See, if you remember whatever a opinions people have of you does not change what God sees in you. I need someone to understand the actions of people against you have nothing to do with what God shall do through you. That's why you got to let go and let God. You have to keep in your mind God always has the last word. And I understand that seems easier said than done, but you got to get in your mind God will handle it. So you're thinking it's too many people. You're thinking that one person is just too powerful. Listen, just remember God always has the last word because here it is. The enemy is counting on the fact that you will give up. See, the enemy has spent his time watching the people attack you. He spent his time watching you be affected by the actions of other people. And he knows you're about to throw in the towel. That's why I need to encourage someone to let go and let God. Listen, for every person who has been given a promise but is facing problems, I need you to put a smile on your face to the people who continue to face opposition as you try to move forward. I need you uh, to put a smile on your face as you hear people planning to try and take you down while you at the same time are taking the steps that lift you up to your promise. I need you to put a smile on your face. I don't know someone saying, why am I smiling with all this stuff that's happening to me? You're smiling because what's happening to you will not kill you. You just got to learn to let go and let go. The reason you need to smile is because you know that the promise shall be fulfilled. So letting go and letting God is an act of faith that says no matter what happens, no matter what I come up against, I know that the promise will come to fruition. And in this season you're in right now, you're going to need faith to make it through. I know you've got all the degrees. I know you have 40 years of experience on your job. I know you got money in the bank. That's all nice. But all of that's not going to help you with what you are facing. What you're dealing with is a faith journey. And you're going to have to remember that God is able. Because here is too many of us out there have forgotten that God is able. You've become so inundated by trials and tribulations that you've decided to give up and you're mad with people because you're saying, if folk would have just left me alone, I would have been all right. But can I tell you, stop worrying about what folk do. Stop worrying about how people treat you. What God has spoken over your life is going to happen. Because here it is, I want someone to know the 
promise is coming. Uh, somebody needs to hear me. The promise uh, is coming. I can't tell you when, uh, but I need you to know the promise uh, is coming. Uh, and I wonder this morning uh, if there anybody out there that can celebrate the fact uh, that while I have some problems, uh, I know there's still a promise. Uh, I know my problems uh, can't stop the promise. Uh, somebody needs to hear me. Uh, your problems uh, can't stop the promise. Uh, so you so focused on the problems, uh, you forgot that the promise is divine. Uh, and so here it is. Uh, the problems uh, can't stop the promise. Uh, that's what you got to remind yourself uh, that no matter what the problem is, uh, your promise shall come to fruition. Uh, can I say it like this? Uh, a few years ago, uh, one of my cousins uh, introduced me to this app called Waves. Waves is a GPS app that will let you know where the police are. It lets you know when there's traffic. And I ended up downloading the app. And I was making my way home. And I came in contact with some standstill traffic. I couldn't go nowhere. But the Waves app on my phone recalculated my route and helped me to get around the traffic. What are you saying preacher when it comes to the promises of God I understand you'll run into some problems that seem to put you at a standstill but if you just trust God God will reroute you and see some of us this morning can testify my life was at a standstill but the Lord he rewarded me I need some folk in here who can really celebrate with you that the Lord will see you through. I wonder how many people can just say thank you God for making a way for me. See some of us know what it's like but you can say God. Yes God. God made a way out of no way. I wonder if there's anybody that can just testify. God made a way out of nowhere you didn't know what to do you didn't know how you were going to get through but God made a way out of nowhere and I wonder is there anybody out there that that's your praise this Sunday morning that you can testify that in the midst of what you were going through God made a way out of nowhere that's a good place to give God some glory I wonder why you're watching on your screen. Can you just lift your hands in the air and say, God, I thank you for making a way. But listen, for us to really understand, let's look at the text. In the text, we find that Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples, and he asks what seems to be a simple question. He says this, who do people say the human one is? They replied by saying, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus goes to Peter and changes the question and asks, who do you say that I am? Look at this. He kept the same question for everybody else. But then he asked Peter a different question. He asked Peter a different question because Peter had a different calling. Let me help someone out because some of us are upset with God because you keep comparing yourself to others because I'm sure if Jesus would have done it to us we would have been like and questioned Jesus. Why did you put me on the spot? Here it is. Peter was a disciple but he had another purpose and I understand you're tired of the change and you're tired of God moving things around because you're saying God, you doing that with everybody. You're not doing that with everyone else. Why you got to keep doing things to me? Why I have to be the one that keeps being disturbed? It's because there is something more God wants to do with you. 
you see you complaining because you're saying it's too much when God is saying it's just the preparation can I say it like this uh, this past Christmas I was trying to decide what I was going to make uh, for the Christmas meal and I uh, talked to one of our members and uh, they shared with me what they were making they were going to make prime rib and I said that sounds like a good idea but you have to understand uh, prime rib is not your average cut of meat uh, in order to cook it right you have to place it in the oven at around 500 degrees now it doesn't stay in there long but in order for you to get it where it should be you have to place it in high heat can I just tell you you are not just anybody you're not just the average person but God has a calling on your life that requires you to go through some more stuff than other people but what I want you to understand is this whatever you got to go through God is with you someone needs this see Peter was asked a question because he had a different assignment than the rest of the disciples but Jesus remained with him can I just tell you whatever you've been through whatever you're experiencing even right now just know God is with you I understand it's a lot on you but you are not by yourself the Lord is with you and so yeah I understand things have changed but just know God is with you I know you don't have the friends you used to have but God is with you I know you're not at the places you thought you would be by now but God is with you and if you just let go and let go you'll find out that the Lord will take you to where you're called to be I came to let somebody know stop stressing over the changes stop worrying about the problems but I need you to celebrate the fact that God is yes he is the Lord is with you and my Bible says if God be for us who then can be against us I need somebody to understand that God yes God God is yes he is he's with you you got to remind yourself every day you wake up and you facing some obstacles just remind yourself say self God is with me oh, every day you wake up just say to yourself I know I got some problems but I woke up with the Lord on my side and is there anybody that can celebrate on this Sunday morning that you woke up with the Lord on your side I know you woke up next to your boo I know you woke up and you got money in the bank I know you woke up and you saw your children's faces but the thing you really need to celebrate is the fact that you woke up and God was with you I need somebody out there to give God the glory because you know the Lord is yes the Lord is the Lord is the Lord is he's with you come on give him glory and say thank you God for being on my side look at this there are three things I want to pull out from the text when you let go and let God the first thing you find is he fills you the text says that Peter responds to Jesus by saying you are the Christ the son of the living God Jesus responds by saying happy are you Simon son of Jonah because no human has shown this to you rather my father who is in heaven has shown you all right look at this everyone else was answering from their own understanding but it's peter who speaks from the spirit of god and listen here's what i want you to understand the other disciples may have been upset because of peter's answer they may have wanted to give that answer and be good being good jesus's good grace but they didn't realize because it wasn't in them and someone needs this the reason why you're so powerful is because of what's in you see God 
poured into Peter for him to have the knowledge of who Jesus was. And there was nothing no one could do to take that out. And see, I want to encourage someone because you're so focused on the negative words and actions of others that you don't realize that the most powerful thing is what people don't see. And that's what God placed on the inside of you. And this is why you can't be stopped because God put it in you. See, there's nothing on earth that can take out what God put in. And so listen, you need to understand that in the midst of everything, just let go and let God. God has made some deposits in you. God has poured himself out into you. And so listen, Peter didn't know the question was coming, but God gave him what he needed to respond and that's a good place to park right there see there have been some things that have happened in your life uh, that you did not expect uh, but you still made it through uh, and you made it through because uh, of what the Lord put inside you uh, listen you really need to pay attention uh, to all the things that you've had to deal with uh, that were really no problems all because uh, the Lord gave you what you needed See, some of us haven't been thanking God for the right things. Your praise shouldn't just be for the house you live in and the car you drive and the clothes you put on. But your praise should also be, thank you God for providing for me. Thank you God for filling me. That's why you need to just let go and let God. Because when you do that, the Lord works on you you. And see, someone needs to understand that when you surrender yourself over to God, God does a new thing in you. And listen, if you know that the Lord made a deposit in you, that the Lord has poured himself out in you, you should have a praise this morning. Because watch this, God poured into Peter. But Peter wasn't perfect. Someone needs this. See, here you are. Still a work in progress. But God is still pouring. He's still pouring himself out into you. And I'll tell you, most of us like to put our resources in things that are complete. For example, if you were to go to buy a car, you wouldn't just go into the car dealership and buy some wheels and just some seats and then wait for the rest to be finished but listen God does not do that God invests God pours in while we're in the process of becoming who he's called us to be and see that's why you need to understand that God is so good God is pouring in in you even while you're trying to find your way God is pouring in you even when you fall God is pouring in you while you're becoming who he's called you to be that's why you want to say thank you God because he didn't wait until you were a finished product but God is pouring into you right now God loves you so much that God began pouring in you yes to you that's still a mess yes to you that's made mistakes yes to you that's trying to make your way God said, I'm not going to wait until you make it there. I'm going to pour into you right now. I need somebody out there who can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for pouring into me. I know there's some folk that didn't think much of you. Oh, but that's all right, because God kept pouring. I know there's some folk who've been talking about you, but that's all right, because God kept on pouring. And when you know that God's still pouring, you want to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you kept on pouring in me. And here he is, 
what I like about God. Because when God began to pour, God began to fix. Somebody's missing it. When God began to fill you up, God saw you as you were. He saw the holes in your life. He saw the imperfections that were there. And when God began to pour, God at the same time began to fix. Somebody missing this. That when God began to fill you, he at the same time began to fix fix you. God at the same time began to mold you. God while he was pouring himself out began to shape you into who you are called to be. God has been so good that he kept on working on you. God hasn't stopped working on you. And you mean to tell me on this Sunday morning that you got to a place where you don't want to say thank you God the devil is alive you want to say thank you God for pouring in me thank you God for molding me thank you God for shaping me cause here it is God should have looked at us and turned the other way but when God God, 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 when he saw you, he didn't see the mistakes, but he saw his child. Yeah, that's why you want to have a praise, because the Lord still claims you. I wonder if there's anybody out there that can say thank you, God, because you still, you still claim me. Listen, not only do we see in the text when you let go and let God, he fills you, but we also see he confirms you. Jesus says to Peter in the text, I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock, and the gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against him. Here it is. Jesus in front of the disciples tells Peter who he shall become. Jesus does not talk about who Peter is now. Jesus speaks who he shall become. And this is important. Jesus does not speak to who Peter is now, but he speaks to what he shall be. We know Peter had some issues but Jesus still chose him because God poured into him. So you got to understand, once God chooses you, it doesn't matter what no one has to say. Here it is. Peter was now going to be the head of the church of Jesus Christ. And please pay attention. The text does not say Jesus asked for the disciples to vote. He didn't ask the disciples who they think should lead. But instead, Jesus confirms who Peter shall be. And some of us have a testimony that says, I was chosen, uh, but I don't seem like the right fit. But let me encourage you on today. You don't seem like the right fit because you're looking at things with your eyes and not God's eyes. See, in his eyes, you are the right fit. You got to keep understanding that God's ways and our ways are not the same. And we have to understand, we have to let go of the opinion of ourselves that we're not it. Yeah, you may not fit by other standards, but you do by God's standards, and that's all that matters. And I need someone this morning to just walk in the fact that the Lord confirms you. I know you didn't expect it, but I need you to embrace the fact that God has confirmed you. And when you understand that God confirmed you in spite of you, that's even more the reason to shout, because again, 
Peter was not the seemingly best choice but he was God's choice I need someone to know you are God's choice listen you got to let go and let God let go of the insecurities let go of the self doubt and just accept the fact that God chose you who cares if you're not on the who's who's list you are on God's list and the Lord has called you now I wonder if there's any one who just wants to say thank you God for choosing me thank you God for choosing me thank you God for calling my name thank you Lord because there are some people who skipped over your name put your name at the bottom of the list because they didn't want your name to be called but God called it anyway and you want to say thank you thank you God because I don't deserve it but you still did it anyway and if you know what I'm talking about that the Lord chose you in spite of you and on this Sunday morning you've been God of praise now that says I've got to praise because God chose me God chose me God chose me God chose not to be your praise this morning that God chose you anyway but listen last thing and I'll be out your way not only do we see when you let go and let God that he fills you he confirms you but lastly he covers you look at the text the text says Jesus continues by telling Peter that the gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against you he says I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven anything you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven anything you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven all right here's what I want someone to understand that Jesus tells Peter tag you're in Jesus tells Peter you shall have power and he says not even the gates of hell shall prevail Jesus now lets Peter know that this promise uh, will have some problems but you will make it through because Jesus is speaking life into Peter Jesus tells Peter that even his words will have power and this morning I need you to know that God is equipping you for where you are going because again what Jesus was speaking over Peter's life was not for his present but Peter was walking in his promise knowing that God would see him through listen when you let go and let God he will ensure you will be all right he will cover you and someone out there can testify that the Lord covered me you were surrounded by the enemy on every side but the Lord still covered you and I need someone who can really give God the glory because you know that when you let go and trusted God God took care of you and the only reason you're here right now listening to this message is because you can testify the Lord took care of you but look at this all right we all know what happened when Jesus was crucified Peter denied Jesus three times three times uh, Peter denied Jesus and Peter still became the head of the church someone needs this because I want you to know that being called by God doesn't mean that mistakes won't happen someone really needs this it doesn't mean you'll make all the right decisions it just means God chose you all right that might not mean a lot to everybody but there are some of us out there who can be honest and say God chose me and here it is he loved you enough to still call you in spite of you I want to somebody really hears me this morning I wonder if there's anyone out there who can just celebrate the fact that God loves you I need some really 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 good folk out there who can celebrate that God God loves me and here it is Peter's mistake should have kept him out of being the head of the church but God in his grace and 
and his mercy covered Peter. Can I tell someone, you need to let go of your mistakes and let God restore you because God is still calling you right now. Someone needs this. I wonder, can you pick up? the mantle that God has given you. I know, I know, I know. You look back over your life and you say, I'm not the right person. I've messed up too much. Done too much stuff. Had too much of a good time. I'm not really the one God should be looking at. But God said, on the contrary, you're the person I've called. You're the person I've chosen. And so you should take up the mantle knowing that God, 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 God chose you anyway. And I wonder, is there anybody out there that can steal, steal, give God the glory? Because you want to be honest and say, God should have left you alone. God should have given it to some else but God kept it so name on it and I wonder if there's anybody out there that just says thank you God thank you God thank you God thank you God but not giving up oh. listen I'm through preaching listen I really want you to understand it's time for you to let go and let God you have a calling God has spoken over your life and I'm speaking to the individuals who know exactly what I'm talking about See, I'm not going to allow you to go any further in 2021 and you not acknowledge and accept the calling God has placed on your life. I'm putting it right out there. I'm speaking to you. Because I know you spent all last year talking about so much going on in 2020. I had so much going on. And you said, if I just get through 2020, I'll be good and I'll pick up and I'll do what God's called you to do. Okay, God's brought you to 2021. It's on you. And you're so worried about everything else. You're worried about what people are going to say, what people are going to do, all this stuff. Listen, let go and let go. Because here's the thing you really need to understand. God wants to do something through you. That's the thing you really got to understand. God wants to. He wants to. He's not being pushed or prodded or be trying to be convinced. No, God wants to do something through you. And so you got to learn to just let go and let God have his way. And so this morning, we're here to help you. This morning, the person standing by to receive you. I know you had some challenges, some bumps along the way. You may have stopped last year. Maybe you started this year and you just stopped because it just got too much for you. Listen, I need you to pick it back up. And maybe this morning you need prayer. You just said, listen, I'm going through so much trying to fulfill what God's called me to do and I keep facing all these trials and obstacles and all this stuff is just coming up. Listen, the Bible declares the prayers of the righteous of that is much. And so we're standing by to pray with you. And so if that's you, I want you to call or text the number that's at the bottom of your screen so that somebody can pray with you. Because this, I'm serious, I don't want you to go any further without you accepting, embracing the 
call God has put on your life. You're gonna, you're gonna do great things. You're called to do great things. I just need you to trust God in this season. And we're here to pray with you. Maybe you're out there and you've never had a relationship with the Lord. Maybe that's why you've never heard the calling that the Lord placed on your life. Maybe he, you've never heard it because you've never been in relationship. Here it is. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I'm here today to tell you, God will receive you. I know you've been saying, you said it all last year. Well, once I get myself together, then I'm going to come to the Lord. Once I get my life right, I got to get all this stuff worked out, then, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to serve the Lord. Listen, you can't get yourself together. But God can. Stop making the excuse. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is your day. And here it is. No matter what you've done, the Lord has never turned his back on you. Matter of fact, the Lord has been standing with his arms stretched out wide to receive you. And so this morning, if you don't have a relationship with him, we have people who are standing by who will lead you into a relationship with the Lord. You don't have to go another day, another moment without having a relationship with the Lord. Just call and text the number that's at the bottom of the screen and someone will respond. And maybe you're out there and you just need a church home. I know we can't be in person, but the doors of the church are still open. We've never closed. The building is not the church. And so here it is. If you need to be in the midst of a community of believers so that you can draw strength, you can be poured wisdom into just needs a prayer partner we need to learn and grow more about God listen that's what the church is all about and our doors are open to you and we invite you to be a part of this church we call Rush Metropolitan and so if you call the text and the at the bottom of the screen somebody's going to respond to you and lead you into a membership here at Rush getting ready to pray and you should already know what I'm going to ask you that's right if you're watching with someone I want you to grab the hand of the person you're watching with if you're watching by yourself I want you to stretch out your hand because we're going to pray together I'm telling you prayer together it works and we got to pray together be on one accord. Because I believe God's getting ready to do something. I'm telling you, there are persons who are going to do amazing things. And it's going to be, called, be because of the Lord working through you. God is getting ready to do something amazing. We're going to pray together as persons get ready to pick up the name. And as we're praying, I just want you to believe. Put aside all of the problems, all the issues, and just really spend time connecting with God. Come on, let's pray. Spirit of living God, we say thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for the love that you have poured into us. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. God, you're just so good. But Lord, we have to be honest and say we have not always been good. We've 
done some things and been places and done things that were not in line with your will for our lives. We have sinned and fallen short. And God, for that we want to ask for your forgiveness. Help us to be better. Help us, God, to be who you've called us to be. God, would you continue to shape and mold us. We thank you, God, for it. God, we're praying for individuals right now who have now decided to pick up the mantle. They've decided to embrace the calling you've placed on their life. God, we're praying for them right now in the name of Jesus. Because we understand as soon as they pick it up, the enemy was put on notice. He was alerted. And so now he's begun his plots and plans to stop what you have called to be. But God, remind every person who's picking up their calling. Remind them that the devil has no real power. Let them know that people have no power. Let them know, God, that as long as they trust in you, everything's going to be all right. They may go through storms. They may have to go up mountains and be in valleys. But God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would remind them that through all of that, it's going to be all right. God, we're praying. We're praying for individuals who have never had a relationship with you. But on today, they're coming to you for the first time. We're praying because we understand that when they made the decision to give their life to you, we understand that the enemy got upset. And because he got upset, he's already again tried and begun planning against them. But God, in the name of Jesus, let nothing the enemy tries to do cause them to separate from you. God, we pray that every person who comes into relationship with you, give them the strength to hold on to your hand in season and out of season. God, give them the strength that when they feel like all hope is gone, they can still have the strength in their hand to hold on to you. God, we thank you. Lord, let them know, even by chance, if they let go, remind them that you're still there to catch them. God, we thank you. Lord, we're praying for those who are coming into the church this morning. Those who are coming to have a membership here at Rush. Lord, again, we pray. That you help us to be an example. God, those who are coming to our family, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to guide them in the right way. The way you've called us to go. God, help us to be what they need. Because they're going to look to us for help and assistance and guidance. And so, Lord, we want to be a positive example. And we don't want anyone to take detriment from anything we say or do. So, God, help us to be the church you need us to be. Lord, we're thanking you right now for what it is you're doing and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we pray that the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're getting ready to go home. Amen. And so every Sunday we close out with the affirmation of faith. We close out stating what we believe. And so now would you join me in sharing together in the affirmation of faith. Let us say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ is only Son of the Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffer under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and in bed. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat down at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, communion of sins, resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. God bless you.